Hey there, Amplifiers. Kenny Harper here. And Manny Torres. And we're excited to be recording this awesome session live at Traffic and Conversion in San Diego, California. Too cool. It is. It's so live that I've got to lay because there's going to be a party here in a second. So I'm excited about that. But we've got some great information as well. Yeah, n- not too crazy of a party in this, in this van. We're going to be just sharing some of the immediate takeaways that we've already got. Just in the last couple days, uh, we're hearing from some of the best marketers from around the world. And it's not just, you know, for marketers. But if you're in business or if you're an entrepreneur, you definitely want to be tuned in to what's happening in the marketplace. Because if you haven't noticed, things are changing. And they've changed ever so much in the past couple years due to the pandemic. Yeah, and it's been accelerated because of that pandemic. You know, we were seeing a slow move towards digital. Ryan this morning kicked us off by talking about how that's been accelerated with the pandemic, with businesses forcing, being forced to go online and change their business model so that they could survive. So let's talk about that for a little bit here, because, you know, that's actually something I was thinking, but, you know, Ryan did a really great job of breaking down kind of what's, what's changing. So let's think about first, is it a good time or is it a bad time for marketers? Well, I think you and I probably have that same feeling where no matter what time it is, it's always a great time to be a marketer because you can make the most out of any situation. And I think if you don't have that mindset, you probably need to check yourself and maybe go get a job uh, (laughs) because you probably shouldn't be in business. So it's definitely a great time to be a marketer because anytime there's change, there's opportunity. Yeah, I thought that was my mindset too. You know, it's up to you to make things happen in this life that we have. You want something, you got to create the vision for it, you got to create a plan for it, and then you got to take action. With consistent persistence, you can make anything happen. But there are some changes happening, and let's talk about some of those, because if, if people are thinking, I'm, I'm just going to do the same thing I've always done, and it's going to continue to get the same results it always has... They're going to get a rude awakening. Exactly. Well, one of the things that Ryan talked about right off the back is the, the law of supply and demand. And since there's so many more people going online and using advertising, that's naturally going to make the costs go up. So as a lot of marketers were enjoying low cost per clicks and advertising costs early on, now that's not the case. So you have to figure out how can you still make those ad costs work for your business? And you know, I had you know, this background in search engine optimization for some time years back, and then I quit riding that wave, but I try to keep a pulse of what's going on with it because we help businesses amplify their business, right? But we typically will hire help if we need someone to actually do the optimization at this point. But one of the things that I witnessed years back is that some of the strategies that you can put into play just don't get the same results as they once did. You used to be able to create certain pages with certain keywords, certain descriptions, maybe get a few links back to it, and you get really good search engine results. But the thing I was a little bit startled to see today was like where organic search results are even showing up in the page. And I think there's a client that has been experiencing that recently is they're seeing a little bit less uh, clicks through to their site. And I did a search recently and saw that for myself. And I was, I made that note. Um, I'm looking at the full screen in my laptop and I don't see any organic listings. I have to scroll down a couple times before I even see an organic search. Yeah. That was an eye opener for me too, because you know, Google's added all the new, snippets you've got the video up top you've got their suggested things to uh, ask other questions other links to more of their content so they're happy because they're driving people back into the search engine but yeah that that organic search is so far down that we probably would never click there and that's impacting those clients that spent a lot of money trying to get that first page first listing on that search result so even if you do 
manage to outcompete all the other people in the saturated market of SEO and get up top, the paid search and the snippets are getting all the love. So now we've got social media is super saturated. There's so many people to compete against who are very influential, who will do anything for attention. And some of them are you know, really attractive or really funny or really talented. And to compete against them would be quite uh, a challenge because it's, as it was pointed out, it's more about entertainment at this point. Right, and you and I both have kids and we've seen how you know, quickly they can get drawn into something that has no relevance whatsoever to what they're looking for, but it's something that catches their eye. And these are the things that we're competing with. You know, most people have a very short attention span. People say six, seven seconds. And if you can't grab that attention and entertain them, it's gonna be really hard to get their focus and really get your message across. And it's getting more tough because we have more of those influencers and crazy people eating Tide Pods <laughs> and everything else. Uh, so it's another challenge that was illustrated today. So it, it's a couple things that are definitely making it challenging. So we've got ads being more costly and people are you know, getting used to certain types of campaigns so they're being less effective. I've got uh, more saturation in social media in general. Um, we've got technology that's blocking the ability to even track and target. We've got uh, organic search having its challenges. So what is a entrepreneur, a business owner, or a marketer to do? And I want to throw one more out there, the iOS update, which right. takes away tracking. So there goes another tool in your tool belt. Uh, but what we've seen is, you know, it's kind of taking a step back. So instead of looking for what's changing, we start to look and say, what hasn't changed? What's still working? And one of the things that was brought up today, which I, you and I both believe, which is those principles of marketing, what are those key things like market message media so that you can really use those frameworks of success that have been working for decades and implement those into your business? And we're the big fans of value journey optimization. Right. So crafting the path to attract prospects and seamlessly, subtly guide them to become customers that pay, stay, and refer. Just got done delivering a presentation on that. And if you haven't documented that path and aren't consistent with it, that's a good place to focus. And then one of the things that we've been a fan of for some time is, is that hybrid marketing, like taking it offline and not just relying on digital. If you can use digital maybe to get in front of an audience, maybe to get their attention, but then what about going offline? move that conversation forward. It's that old adage of when your brother-in-law tells you to buy a stock, it's probably not the time to buy the stock. <laughs> so when everyone else is jumping into something, it's always a good time to reflect back and say, well, what other things had been working in the past that we stopped doing that we could start leveraging again? And email is another great one because you own that list. You can dictate when and how you're communicating to your prospects and your clients. And it's a great way that you can continue that relationship and progress them down the line. When you're providing great content and you're getting it in front of your, your audience and then you have a plan to what, what's the value I'm providing here? I, I don't know who suggested it, but they said, look at your newsletter. Would you read it? Now, granted, you may not be your target audience, but is it entertaining? Is it interesting? Is it helpful? Is it relevant? Or is it just stuff, right? I don't know how many people's email I get and it's just a bunch of stuff, but I think more people do it wrong than actually create something that people would want to see. Right, and a great, great way to overcome that is go out and subscribe to some of those newsletters that are doing it right. Um, the Hustle is a great one that you can use in as, as an example and see what they're doing to create that engagement. See how they're taking you down that customer value journey, moving you up the line to the next step and see how you can implement a little bit at a time. You don't have to become them overnight, but what's one thing you can take from their newsletter and implement into your own. And then mixing in that physical element, maybe sending an actual physical letter to someone's mailbox. You know, once upon a time, mailboxes 
were full of a bunch of junk mail. I remember opening my mail. Yes, I remember this happening. And it was just full of this big wad of stuff. And you had to just sort through it and throw the trash out and you wouldn't look at it. But recently I opened my mailbox and it's, you know, there's a few pieces of mail in there. Most of them look generic and you throw them away. So what would you do? I think it's funny. It, you know, we have the inverse effect. It used to be we got excited when, when we had one email. You right, know, back you when got AOL. mail. <laughs> and uh, back then we used to, you know, be frustrated with how much junk mail we have. And now it's flip-flopped where we have so many emails you don't even know a way to read them all. But now you've got a few things in your mail and someone sends you a postcard or a letter and you, you feel flattered, right? Because you feel, wow, they took the time to do this. So that is a great multi-step way that you can reach out. And as we know, the more ways that you can touch a client, a prospect in your outreach in different mediums, <clears throat> the, the, the improvement of your conversion is gonna go up because now they're seeing your face, they're hearing you, they're, they're in, not inundated, but they feel like they know, like, and trust you more. And now that's a better chance for you to move that relationship forward. And I know some people have been resistant um, business owners are resistant. They're like, that costs money to send things in the mail. But what would you tell them that are saying it's going to cost too much money to put something in the mail? Well, we're, we're very big on knowing your numbers. And if you know what it costs to acquire a client, what your lifetime value is, you can start to work those numbers back and say, all right, for the investment that I've put into these mailers, how many clients am I getting and what type of uh, purchases are they making because a lot of times those ones that do purchase from direct mail are have a higher lifetime value so you can work the numbers and make sure that it, it works for you and don't look at it as a cost but an investment into acquiring those new customers and helping you grow your business yes and I, I must say I'm, I've heard a lot of people uh, poo on direct mail and they say oh direct mail doesn't work it's just a bunch of garbage well if you send garbage and it doesn't, it's not really compelling, it's not interesting, it doesn't provide value, it doesn't have an offer, then don't expect it to do magic. I just sent people a piece of paper and they didn't want to hire me. I'm like, what? <laughs> really? So, but if you put something out that gets attention, it's creative, and you know who your ideal customers are, and you put maybe an offer that, a first step offer to get them to take even a step, the next direction, then that's how direct mail can be really effective. And there's always one thing to note, which is follow the money. If you see businesses that are successful and they're using direct mail, they're not just doing that because they feel like obligated to send out some mail. They're doing that because it works. And if you see someone in that space that's doing that, learn from them, see what they're doing start to, instead of throwing that mail away, grab it, start to look at what their offers are. How are they grabbing attention? How are they following up? And start to see how you can implement that into your business. So I'm gonna use some round numbers just as an example. You can say, oh, maybe if we sent out direct mail, maybe it'd cost us 10 grand or something. Throwing a rough round number out. Depends on who, how many you're sending, what, where you're sending it. But if you know the lifetime value of a customer and you calculate, man, we would only need a handful of customers to pay for the campaign. And then because you're considering repeat business and then more, a uh, handful more would, would make it even more profitable and just continually grow the ROI. Then you th you're really thinking about leading with ROI, right? And well, it might be cheaper just to go straight digital, but if straight digital doesn't get the message to the market, then there's a challenge. Right. So, so it's a combination. If you could use both, it's the mixed media, the multimedia approach that really can be a differentiator. Yeah, and that's a great way to cut through the noise, to, as you said, to differentiate yourself and to stand out because that's what it's all about is gra grabbing that attention, making people realize, hey, I'm aware of them, now I'm starting to engage with them. Hey, maybe I'm gonna pass off my information and maybe take the first step to working with them. For example, we send out a free copy of our book. You can go to findmyprofits.com. Go to findmyprofits.com and download our um, 
uh, checklist of strategies that you could use to amplify your business, increase your profitability. Uh, great practical marketing and sales uh, techniques that are low cost, that are easy to implement. Uh, you can put them into your business. You can go to findmyprofits.com, but one of the things I, I brought that up for is we'll, we'll gladly send out, mail out a free copy of our book. And in fact, people tell me, well, isn't that expensive? You know, I sell my book for $20. I'm like, yeah, you sell yours for 20, how much money is that making you, right? right? So you could sell 100 books for $20, you make $2,000. I can give out a hundred books to a hundred ideal prospects. I could probably more make much more money doing it that way um, by starting a relationship and then using the principles of the value journey to seamlessly and subtly move those relationships forward in an authentic manner. See, the thing is, if you if you send the book to people who your ideal customers are they may not have even been thinking about buying your book. But now you've started an opportunity. And so some way that you could do, like for instance, tying this together, you could send out a direct mail that says, hey, get a free copy of our book by visiting this website. They go to the website, they put in their contact information and then uh, their mailing address. And then now you've put your message in front of the market, they've taken an action, indicating now I'm going to send them a book, right? So that's uh, just an example of how you can combine those different um, offline and online strategies to really create something that's powerful. And bringing it full circle, we talked about things that haven't changed. I don't know about you, but I've never, you know, had someone give me something and I w felt bad about it, right? You, right? Getting a gift is something that's exciting and you're, you feel honored that someone thought of you and that's something that doesn't change. And the more that you can you know, provide value to people and show up differently, uh, they, they want to reciprocate that. They want to figure out, even if they're not going to do business with you, they're at least thinking of you, you're top of mind. They're going to start to say, hey, how can I support this person and how can I provide value back? And that's just human nature because people want to help others. And providing a gift like that is a great way to differentiate your, yourself and start that process. So have a plan. Create a great message and execute the plan. There are going to be changes if people are thinking, oh, well, we used to spend a lot of money in advertising. Now we've moved into digital marketing. We're just going to do digital marketing and then think it's going to solve all the world's problems. It's getting saturated. Things are changing. It's going to get more challenging. We've got to be more creative. And if you're looking for other creative ideas, reach out to us. You know, go to growthamplifiers.com, contact uh, me or Manny, and we do offer consultations. Um, we call them Amplified Business Breakthroughs. We even wrote a book on it. And it's just a time, a moment to look at what's going on in your business, identify potential um, bottlenecks that could be blocking your business growth, identifying blind spots that you have that you're not aware of, or uh, discovering some untapped opportunities that if you uncovered, it could be a big impact for your business. You leave with actionable insights. And then if you find the opportunities that we share, you want some help with implementing them, that's where we have a conversation of how that might look. So um, connect out, reach out to us, growthamplifiers.com. Other than that, we want to hear your comments. What's changing for you in the marketing landscape? Uh, if you have questions or thoughts for future podcast episodes, we'd love to hear that. Uh, we've really enjoying our time out here at Traffic and Conversion. We're co connecting with some really great people, and it's it's been a great experience. Yeah, and I, I just want to top that off with, uh, you know, don't wait. That's what got gets most business owners in, in uh, challenges in the first place. They they sit back and they overanalyze. Just go ahead and take some action. Go ahead and reach out to us. Uh, let us know what's going on in your business. Let us help you. Um, there's no cost for that. We're, we're just going to you know, have a chat with you, see if it's a fit. And uh, we'd love to give you some insights to help you take a next step forward. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. We've appreciated this time at TNC 2021 and look forward to hearing from you. Cheers. To show your support, take a moment to amplify this message by sharing it online. To connect with me or gain more business growth insights, visit www.growthamplifiers.com. 
thank you for your support.